good morning, Christian. <laughs> In our never-ending battle for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Okay, forget that. Knowing that it's the end of the world. Okay, forget that. Realizing that it's Christmas season. Nah. Or that it's Hanukkah. Well, or that it's Kwanzaa. Hmm. What I really wanted to do was to begin to get Good Morning Christian back on track. You know, back in the place of Good Morning Christian. <laughs> that time and that place where we can go ahead and say, Hey, what's up? How's it going? Are you doing all right? Are you acting all right? Or are you down and out like I am during this time of the season? Well, if you are, then maybe you should listen to this little devotional that I'm going to read to you that might, uh, you might jump on with the prayer of Jabez, which I hate that book, I hate that thought, I hate the concept of enlarging your tent because it has been so abused, so confused, and so used that, blah, can't stand it. But, since it happens to be in this devotional that I'm reading, and I am trying to get Good Morning Christian back up and back on track with Facebook. Let's go ahead and share this as it were. Enlarge your tent. Enlarge the place of your tent. And let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. From Isaiah uh, 54.2. Yeah. So, there you go. Jabez, knock yourself out. When God comes to a life in power, it is always a time of rejoicing and expectation for the future. Isaiah described this experience as similar to that of a child born to a previously barren woman. The child's arrival changes everything. Boy, ain't that the truth. Now, I gotta tell you, you know, most people that I know, men don't grow up unless they have to grow up. I mean, look at me, I'm sitting here in a t-shirt, I'm 60. <laughs> Well, at least I cleaned the room behind me, I think. Sort of clean, kind of. But really, men don't grow up until really, basically, they have children. Now, hopefully, women and men both change with the advent of a child. And being that this is the time of the nativity, that we celebrate the arrival of Jesus to the earth, I really wish all of us could grow up in reality, and in some ways grow down, to the perspective of a child that the advent or the intervention of having a baby in our life would make us realize that we have responsibilities, accountabilities, and things we need to do. But the child's arrival changes everything. Life cannot continue as usual. Whereas the dwelling place might have been large enough for two, it must now be made bigger. Although I have seen some people really cram a lot of people into one room. The child's presence causes the parents to completely rearrange the way they were living. Isaiah proclaimed that when God comes, you must make room for him in your life. Man, ain't that the truth. If you ain't taking the time, if you ain't making the time, if you ain't shaking up your schedule to spend time with God, then guess what? Good morning, Christian is more like, good night, Christian, because guess what? As far as God is concerned, you're over and done with. You're just waiting for bacon. You know, I mean, bacon meaning not the kind of bacon that we would eat, but bacon meaning that you're going to be like a sizzling in the sunshine of, guess what? Hell itself! Yeah, dude, make time, make a place, get ready, you need to spend time with God. So God's presence will add new dimensions to your life, your family, your church. You do not simply add Christ on to what you were doing to your busy life and carry on with business as usual. When Jesus is your Lord, everything changes. Whereas before you may not have expected good things to come through you or in your life, now you should have a spirit of optimism. You should be, in reality, thinking like, hey, it's going to get good, it's going to get better, or we're going to exit this place. we got to get out of this place if it's the last thing we ever do. Ooh, think about that for a while. Rapture, please. Anytime. That's all. Here I come. Jesus, take me. I'm yours. You ought to expect your life to become richer and fuller. You can anticipate God blessing others through your life. 
you can look for God to demonstrate his power through your life in increasingly abundant measure. Meaning that the more you get, the more you give out. The more you got, the more you give away. In other words, you don't keep it for yourself today, but you give away what you got today so that you can get more tomorrow. It works that way, believe it or not. As a Christian, how do you make room for Christ in your life? You repent of your sin to begin with. Get rid of some of that junk. Man, I tell you, I became a baggage carrier when I started getting married, you know, and decided that, you know what, I was going to enjoy my life with someone else. That meant I had to carry their baggage, too, and pray that not only they ask God to forgive themselves, but also I pray for them, too, and pray for myself, that God would forgive all of us of our sins. You allow Jesus the freedom to do what he wants in you. You watch eagerly for his activity in your life and in your family and in your church. You live your life with the expectancy that Jesus will fill you with his power in the days to come and will stretch you to do things in his service that you never ever would have done before. And that in reality is why we brought back Good Morning Christian. Remember, God isn't talking about me telling you, you know, only so that I could be bigger and better, you know, and stretch out my tent. But rather, God is telling you, hey, you know what, dude, that little pup tent that you were sleeping in, you know, out on the street? You need a bigger dwelling place. Yeah, because God wants to use you to do something great with him. Hey, knock yourself out, Christian. Go out and conquer the world. At least conquer yourself so that God could take you a place where he can move through you to conquer someone else himself.